मिनट पहले आ गए तो अभी हम 41 लोगों को देख पा रहे हैं और धीरे धीरे नंबर्स बढ़ रहे हैं मैं इतने में आ, थोड़ा सा आपका टाइम लेके अमिताभ आपको इंट्रोड्यूस कर देती हूँ क्योंकि ये इतने टैलेंटेड हैं इतनी सारी विधाएं हैं इनके पास जो इतने बड़े कलाकार हैं तो थोड़ा टाइम बचा लेती हूँ और जल्दी से आप लोगों को बताती हूँ अमिताभ के बारे में अमिताभ कुमार इज अ ग्राफिक आर्टिस्ट बेस्ड आउट ऑफ बैंगलोर इंडिया इन द पास्ट ही हैज वर्क विद दी सराय मीडिया लैब डेली वे ही रिसर्च एंड मेड कॉमिक्स प्रोग्राम इवेंट्स डिजाइन प्रिंट मीडिया एंड को क्यूरेटेड एन एक्सपेरिमेंटल आर्ट स्पेस जिसके बारे में हिल बी यू नो हिल बी टेलिंग यू मोर ही इज फाउंडिंग मेंबर ऑफ द पाओ कलेक्टिव एंड इंडियन कॉमिक एंसेम्बल एंड इज करेंटली ऑक्यूपाइड विद क्रिएटिंग इको सिस्टम फॉर एमर्जिंग कॉमिक बुक आर्टिस्ट इन इंडिया he has been painting murals across the country for a few years now in fact we wanted him to come to varanasi but there were some issues with that he couldn't but i'm sure in next uh, in our next mural projects in uh, public art project he'll be there and he is a professor is a faculty member at the srishti manipal institute of art design and technology he coordinates the illustration pathway in the undergraduate technical program so professor saab hain aur uh, बहुत सारा ज्ञान है एंड जिनसे हम यू नो वी विल हैव लॉट ऑफ नॉलेज व्हिच ही हैज एंड देयर इज लॉट टू शो एंड लॉट टू टॉक अबाउट सो आई वोंट टेक मच ऑफ योर टाइम एंड आई विल हैंड ओवर द स्टेज टू अमिताभ आई एम हियर एंड मे बी व्हेन द यू नो आई विल कीप आस्किंग देयर आर फ्यू क्वेश्चंस पीपल आस्क डिस्कस जो ऑप्शन है मैं बीच-बीच में आपसे सवाल पूछती रहूंगी अगर लोग बहुत सारे सवाल आई एम श्योर उनके पास होंगे और एंजॉय करिए there is so much he is showing going to show that you will really really love this session <laughs> thank so you nakshi ji uh, no pressure at all <laughs> but i'll i'll quickly start so hello my name is amitabh and uh, what i am what i want to talk to you today about is that how sequential storytelling or graphic storytelling could be the base of of a very fruitful and a very uh, exciting Uh, drawing prospect i've been drawing for oh, about a decade and a half now and i've drawn across various spectrums um i'll get right to it so there were there are basically three institutions that uh, that uh, shaped me uh, one is my 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 alma mater my institution where i learned uh, msu badoda uh, then there was sarai where which was the first place that i worked for sarai and rux media collective i i worked with them for the longest time and uh, there after shishti where i've been went prosper creatively uh wow this is really interesting uh so i'll just get right to the source uh before i talk a little bit about uh myself i felt it's best if i if i take you through a little bit about the context jis mudde ke bare mein main baat cheet karne wala hu uh to wo comics hai और मेरा कॉमिक से रिश्ता एंड हाउ दैट रिलेशनशिप इज अलाउड मी टू एक्सप्लोर सो मेनी डिफरेंट थिंग्स सो आई स्टार्ट बेसिकली इन 1877 इज व्हेन दे से दैट द फर्स्ट इंडियन कॉमिक सो टू स्पीक वाज मेड इट्स द आउट पंच व्हिच वाज अ व्हिच वाज अ सेटायरिकल टेक वेरी मच लाइक द पंच दैट इट वाज इंस्पायर्ड फ्रॉम दिस इज 1877 आई विल जस्ट ग्लीम थ्रू एंड हाईलाइट अ फ्यू माइलस्टोन्स इन द जर्नी ऑफ कॉमिक्स इन इंडिया so that you get a little bit of sense of where i'm coming from uh then there is of course the illustrated weekly that allowed for initial space for not just illustrated text but comics uh this is a, a mario miranda made the uh, cover issue then of course there's amar chitra katha about which we can spend an entire afternoon talking and it's it's uh, it's it has room for so many juicy conversations including its origin but what one can't deny is how it pierced the indian market with multilingual editions uh, and a, a, like the first of its kind uh, pan indian comic sort of a you know a uh, space then of course we had indrajal comics which again was multilingual uh, it had phantom flash garden uh, and what is what many say is the first indian superhero which is indrajal comics uh and indrajal was also multilingual and ran uh, a, a long series this is bahadur sorry bahadur comics uh then of course the scene shifts to delhi where diamond comics and chacha chaudhary and pran start to 
stretch the imagination of of what the superhero entity can be uh faladi singh agni putra bhai but the real superhero movement was that was to come was with these guys uh manish sir manoj sir and sanjay sir uh manish gupta manoj gupta and sanjay gupta they run uh, raj comics and i've had the pleasure of of knowing sanjay sir really really well i've met him a couple of times because my first uh, my first job <laughs> after i graduated from art school was in sarai where uh, for two years i had to just sit and read comics and create a comic book archive uh, it's an unbelievable job but they came out with raj comics and uh, raj comics to me as a reader when i was growing up was was fundamental to my childhood and then later literally became my my first uh, project that i worked on after art school that's doga this is the entire raj raj comics universe access to the raj comics office as well so i was i was a, a researcher essentially uh, an intern researcher might i add for sri csds in the in the sri media lab and uh, i was part of my research included going and talking to uh, the artist that made raj comic primary among them being mr anupam sena who's who's really in some ways uh, you know one of the pioneers in the indian indian comic scene that's one character he created called called super commando dro then of course is uh, you know at in 94 uh, origins and uh... i think we have lost amita but uh, stay tuned i think he'll be back in few mom seconds it's just the internet sometimes you know it plays tricks with us and uh, let's give him few seconds to come back if the red sign shows he had a bad network but i'm sure he'll join us soon meanwhile i can tell whoever has been to you know delhi and the lodi art district where if you have seen the work which street art has done there is a beautiful wall which uh, was done I mean, basically by what's... amitab okay amitab is back we lost you for a seconds for oh, you did can yeah, i did. my screen being shared yeah your screen is shared if you go back i can tell you where we sort of lost you over yeah. here no 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 in the last uh, the other one black and white yeah this okay yeah. so this was about raj comics um i was talking about then i spoke briefly about how the scene shifted from the industrially made comic which had worked through a conveyor belt mechanism and uh, we had uh, an artistic a singular artistic vision leading the entire comic book making process 94 origins and river of stories really changed the landscape and and allowed for many other forms like this to exist uh, this is one page from it one of those primary i mean for me a uh, 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 seminal influence was sarnath banerjee's corridor uh, i i remember reading it in in calcutta and my my world changed suddenly i mean because i i came from a tradition of indian action superhero comics and for me comics meant a certain kind of stories uh, and i hadn't read river of stories by then i i read river of stories much later but my first introduction to the world of what they call the graphic novel was sarnath uh, and corridors uh was was the one book that really uh created a vast public impact in the way the comic form was perceived packaged marketed and the graphic novel is essentially a marketing terminology uh and then there were a spate of other such single artist helmed project which were artistic in vision and it was a privilege knowing a lot of these artists and uh, you know sort of really growing up in that scenario when i was in delhi so amrita patel's kari Vishwajyoti Ghosh's Delhi Calm, which was about the emergency, Parasmita Singh absolutely stunning the hotel at the end of the world, Apu Pen's Moon Moon World and Hala Hala series, which he continues to really churn out, um, and then came uh, came something that I had the privilege of being part of, which was with with Orijit Sen, Parasmita Singh, 
Vishwajyoti Ghosh and Sarnath Banerjee, who I met as a researcher. I met them because I was interviewing them. Uh, and through those interviews, we concocted this plan of starting a collective called the Pau Collective. And I was literally the youngest and the most unrecognized uh, and most fledgling member of the collective. But I was gracefully taken forth this incredible journey where we published an anthology of Indian comics called Pau Anthology. Uh, uh, and then, you know, subsequent anthologies that came after that, Drawing the Line, Dogs, uh, First Hand. And the scene really shifted to even independent publishing houses like Captain Bidgley uh, publishing out Mice Will Be Mice, Bharat Murthy's Comics India, uh, which really churned out a prolific volume of comics. And now Bharat's back with Verite as an independent publication. And of course, Manta Ray, which is now uh, which is now known as Kokachi. Uh, this is a beautiful image made by Just Jot. Uh, so the, the comic scene has completely altered, as you could have seen from the days of Outpunch to the days of Manta Ray in terms of publishing, in terms of content, in terms of how it's actually made. And uh, I found myself uh, bang in the middle of that scene, which was... Uh, Delhi between 2006 and 2008. And I was very happy. Uh, transcript, and this was a Sarai Media Lab project. Till I met a friend uh, one evening, and I was telling him how happy I was with my research question, and it's, it's, it's leading somewhere. And the friend asked me, uh, so what's your output? <laughs> and that question just hit me uh, because there was no output, or I wasn't thinking of, I'd stopped drawing. And uh, after art school and the art school that I came from was very heavily leaning towards the narrative tradition. In any case, MSU Baroda. So my output became a comic about Raj comic. <laughs> it's called Raj comics for the hard headed. Um, uh, and I sort of it was part of it was a Sarai Media Lab publication. And I sort of weaved the story using photographs, using drawing images, using found images about this person who uh, gets, so here you see the, the Raj comic superhero uh, makes an entry again. So, so the Raj comic superhero intervenes the narrative as a Raj comic superhero and then takes our narrator into the Raj comics universe. And where basically what Raj comics is, it's politics around urban spaces. It's, it's, uh, it's idea of the society uh, masses, basic tidbit information about the superheroes. Uh, what is the threat uh, within the comic book construct of Raj Comics? Uh, who, you know, what are the kind of villains that Raj Comics has? Uh, down to, uh, you know, uh, are you allowed to be a superhero? Who authorizes you to be a superhero? Uh, and uh, who who is a superhero, essentially? Uh, law, uh, and I mean, yeah. And it was packaged like a comic and sort of made like it was printed and the print run is still available. I just added a little bit of history about the comics form. This was back in the days I was learning how to design books on Photoshop. So it was really exciting. And uh, this was literally me drawing after three or four years. And I it, it came out of a research project. So it was really funny. I once again started using drawing as part of a Sarai Media Lab strategy. This was a what we called a graphic novel at that point of time uh, with uh, Sarai Media Lab researcher, Bhagwati Prasad, uh, with whom I collaborated later on a, on a number of publications uh, about the story of how the media landscape of Delhi changed. So it really began with the coming of the VCR. And uh, we used, I mean, it was more illustrated text, which had like sequential narrative segments and we collaborated with Raj Comics, who took it on as a commission to make this as a sequential narrative segment. So I was I was thrilled to be, you know, had the opportunity to work with my 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 heroes literally. Mm, yeah, I won't I won't take you through this. There are just some some drawings in here that I think are rather nice. <laughs> so I'll just I'll just quickly take you through that. Uh, back when I was in art school, I was I was I'm a I'm a painting graduate. So. I was more painterly in the way I looked at form. And uh, this is rotring pen and ink all the way. And um, a lot of it was was new to me. Uh, so I just want to put it out there that 
the practice of drawing was was new for me in that sense and this book really allowed me a months long process where i was uh, you know uh working for an organization uh it it gave me an organization support to realize this drawing uh, or these these set of drawings which were which also because it i was working with rats media collective it really allowed me they really allowed me a wide handle and uh, an experimentative way of looking at how images symbolize stories you know and the role perhaps that stories have with images uh so this was that i thereafter uh started working on my own comics uh that i started writing <laughs> this was on the 2010 commonwealth games uh it's called uh, gai kha gayi or the cow ate it up um and this is literally about the stadium landing on the lajpat nagar horizon as a as a ufo a giant cow coming out of it out of the stadium and the cow literally eating up delhi <laughs> and people just jumping all around in rapturous pointless motion uh it's is 10 years to the day that i made this comic this this stands to be my my first serious attempt at uh, sequential storytelling i thereafter made more comics this was for blaft publication i was very fortunate that all my early work got published as part of some anthology or the other the cow ate it up was part of sarai reader and this was part of Uh, blast and i was trying to find my voice as a storyteller in terms of so this is just a whimsical story of a goat talking about how he hates traveling by air and as he's talking about his about his fear of air travel he's going on a rather interesting journey himself where he's chopped and uh, sold and uh, cooked and uh, eaten and then uh, excreted uh, and he's still telling the story uh, and then the comic it was this was part of an anthology as well um and uh, well yeah i probably shouldn't show this uh there after working for the pow and anthology my i realized a dream where i collaborated with raj comics so for me as a as a as a as a researcher who came with a practice based background to collaborate with raj comics on we created our own superhero it was called helmet man and uh, this is helmet man in zamzamabad uh yeah this is part of the pow an- anthology i won't tell you anything about the story you got to go by by the book <laughs> uh and this was the a phase where i where in about a, a quick time i made a lot of comics um but because i was already initiated with trying to look at the story as an in through different forms i embarked on a on another series where i used to write stories about this secret cult called the professors and um you know uh and certain adventures that happened there but i would not make a comic i realized that when i was making a comic all i wanted to communicate at the core of it was a feeling or a sensation and i felt that if i if i wrote a story and used the story as a structure maybe to create uh hyper images so i would i would create stories draw out scenes but then i would just collapse all the scenes into one image and i continued continued drawing this under one large story segment called the projectile prophecies uh i won't take too much time explaining what that is but they were they were yeah they were composites where i used to draw separately and compose separately i wanted to sort of break the two processes um and a very vast and rich body of work which were responding to stories uh came about so from from directly working with sequential narratives i sort of moved on to uh sort of representing narratives through a complex image or through an through a hybrid image this sort of continued all the way till 2000 and 10 2012 till i made uh, till i made this these these light boxes which were a which were a bad business decision <laughs> because these are expensive things to make but that's another talk about business bad business decisions in art um and i continued to to show my work in the in the art context um hold on i did i did another show 
called message to zero but while i was making these these composites uh and i i was i was showing my work in indian art in 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 art fairs and and stuff so a friend who is a curator and a very dear a very close friend asta chauhan she asked me that whether because my work was of a certain scale she said would i like to uh make big images in public spaces and i said sure why not so and that's how my my journey as a muralist began with this image in 2012 for the extension khidki festival which was a a self funded festival that uh, asta curated in a locality where she was working with the community for a very long time and we were free to sort of work with whatever we wanted to work with so i decided to make this mural by which time as you can probably see my my visual language was already changing and it was sort of transforming from the kind of work that i was doing uh, the the cross hatching works that i was doing so i was i was painting murals uh in 2012 uh i painted two murals for the extension khirki festival and uh, you know once again working with a certain narrative opening but there were all kinds of things that just totally took over materiality the complexity of working live in public spaces aspects of working with the with the community this was we were invited by the, the inaugural 2012 kochi binale and uh, we sort of for uh, me anpuvar ki siddharth karwal roy roy sanjeev yantra uh we we sort of uh worked on a on a on a public mural program and this one for example uh i mean large part of the work was based off stories so this one was was based off the story of aspen wall this we were given the aspen wall area to paint on and 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 aspen wall actually lost all its fortune in the in the great kochi fires uh the the fires that had happened so uh essentially uh i try to make a phoenix to represent the fact how aspen wall rose from the fires that had engulfed his business and started from scratch and then became a successful businessman once again uh and it was still very much narrative based uh this was chava in in pune uh till up till here actually uh i was responding to stories when here at this point of time this was for the 10 years of khoj uh in 2012 yes 2012 uh and uh, i i just wasn't interested in representing anything i wasn't in, interested in representation of form of story for me the fact that it was colors and shapes in public spaces which should respond to that space became a conversation that we got more importance and then uh this was in bangalore in 2013 uh this was again uh, in worli as you can see my own language is is transforming and changing um this was in bangalore once again in 2013 and i think the pinnacle of that phase of i won't tell stories and i'll rebel against my narrative art training was this uh basically i occupied this spot for 10 days continuously and this was the first start festival <laughs> and to date they haven't erased the mural they have erased many murals uh, to date if you are lost there and you ask and you are here and you ask someone uh where mere ko main market jana hai to they'll say ki gandi wali drawing se left le lena <laughs> yeah uh, or just take a right from that ugly drawing you see so it's become a real I think we have lost uh, internet. Ne shay turn le liya. Wo Gandhi drawing ke baad. Kaun si drawing ke baad? Gandhi drawing ke baad. Okay. Haan, hamar internet hi off ho gaya Gandhi drawing ke baad. Itni itra bhaya na drawing thi. But imagine that they are calling it Gandhi, but they haven't erased it. They haven't so erased that's, it. That's the power of something which you can't understand, but you want to keep it with you, like you know. Yeah. So I'll I'll give you the stage back. 
बीच बीच में आना पड़ता है टपकना पड़ता है जब आप गायब हो जाते हैं अरे नहीं नहीं यही तो है गायब आया गायब आया ओके एंड देन दिस वाज जस्ट क्विक वन डे ड्राइंग्स दैट आई डिड इन बेंगलोर अंडर द डबल रोड फ्लाईओवर दिस वाज फॉर स्टार्ट इंडिया दिस वाज अगेन अ वेरी क्विक स्केच इन बांद्रा इन एट बांद्रा कुरला वेयर वंस अगेन आई बिगन टू गेट बैक रिलाइंग ऑन स्टोरीज और बिगन टू एटलीस्ट स्टोरी टेल थ्रू कैरेक्टर्स बट इट वाज स्टिल a site specific response to images this was hand to hand till this happened to me which was kochi binale asked us to come back and anpu who who was the organizer of even the first trip and this trip uh took us back and this time around we got some german friends with us we got tofu and we got tona and uh, tofu tona anpu and me we started collaborating on this huge wall which was once again right on the aspen wall property and while we were doing this it was really funny because these these german fellows like anpur we would cross the road and stand on the other side and like good art art school trained students would just look at the image standing still these guys would go to the other end of the road get on to an auto and drive past they would drive past once they would drive past thrice and then i was like what are they doing till we you know we had this we were we would discuss a lot so till we had this discussion that basically they were responding to the animated image an an image in public space is never still it's it's a moving image because you are constantly moving in public spaces you never stop by a wall and look at the wall uh you know so the way we relate look at art in public spaces is a story it's a story of how you view it it's a story of how your you move from point a to point b and even if i didn't want to this exposure and i must really thank anpu tofu tona for really it was a it was a master class for me i learned so much about painting in public spaces and the role that narratives have there so i was coming back to making comics till i made this which was in pune it's one of the nicest cities to have painted in and one of the nicest group of people who organized it harshvardhan kadam an incredible artist and a dear dear friend organizes the pune street art festival as part of the pune binale it was the last time and we are hoping he does it again soon um uh, this this was that space and i the bridge is very famous because this is where dabolkar got shot and uh, i we were trying to work on a on an overtly political narrative which then we had to tame down but then again as you can see halke halke slowly slowly this story wala kida is coming back uh this was chennai 2015 uh this is chennai again 2015 ah till this point now here once again i need to i need to thank uh a collaboration uh i have been teaching in shristi since 2014 and one of the more incredible things about working in shristi is having an incredible peer network so uh my peer and kaligan shristi uh, shai redia she runs an experiment uh, she runs a moving image festival uh, called experimenta and uh, i was fortunate enough to be asked to create a brand image for experimenta and uh, just working with shai on this uh, creating a poster and uh, you know just the event identity uh, those conversations really forced me to go back to working with narratives as structure in a manner that i didn't because because of the nature of the the event and after this i would say a lot changed because after this i started making one page comics so this was uh, a one page comic that i made which was actually a a reject uh, i think hindustan times wanted to run some city based comics and stuff and i gave them a a dark story of how delhi is made out of magic and this magic is now coming undone and i want everybody to catch its crumbling pieces and vanish so but the story was born and how it manifested was when once again with start india i i collaborated and we worked in the lodi art district and it worked it came out as this which it's an artwork called dead dahlias uh and it's really materializing a lot of uh, uh even even like right down from the elements if you see these the two flowers have debuted in the experiment a poster uh and then they sort of became part of this vast mural that i did in lodi colony with start india here are some details 
and after that a lot of like after that everything changed for me because storytelling came at the core of what i did this was another artwork at tughlaqabad it was responding to the tughlaqabad garbage dump and i made a story of how there was a goat who was beheaded and this is just moments before the body falls down but the head has already fallen down uh, i did it on shipping containers it was a, a sensational experience working on containers very difficult surface uh, but so satisfying uh this was again for a friend this was for uh uh human international and was against bird cages and so we tried to create a story about the angry bird the the intimidating giant dinosaur sized bird that is angrily looking at you behind a cage uh and this was a super indulgent piece i did in for the facebook office uh they invited me as an artist in residence and i decided to just go all out and like for 10 days for 12 hours a day in the indoor comfortable scenario i just painted this piece this is called fire clouds and friends and it follows the story of this this cloud flapping through um these bars i was also invited by the abi abu dhabi art fair and uh i wanted to sort of try and write short stories like really really short stories and start using them as titles so they invited me to work on a bus and i called this artwork agar kal se kaal hai to meri mashuka ke baal kaale hain it won't make sense if i translate it into english but that was a story and uh, and yeah uh, beautiful so essentially uh, this is landor langurs uh, and uh, i'll just run past this was in varanasi this was the vahan of ganga the makara that i tried to represent um this was right now ganga is riding on this makara i mean varanasi i know i saw <laughs> i i i wanted to do this project just because of the story so i did this project in sona haryana mm -hmm. and i i i've been i've been really intrigued by this story in the mahabharat where uh, you know abhiman uh, where uh, 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 you know uh, there were these uh, there were these there was this dog whose mouth was filled by arrows and he followed the uh, i think yudhishthir or someone yeah he he followed yudhishthir someone or i mean it was so basically this story and this event that happened to the dog happened in this area okay <laughs> this is the hastinapur okay. patliputra area and i have wow. been trying to reference the mahabharat in a lot of my stories even the dead dahlias was a story about the mahabharat that i was trying to reference okay. so there was that but then there was also the the story that a site creates and that was another aspect of story story or telling that i i started to embrace as well uh there are few questions uh, amitabh uh, which are coming and uh, before we like wrap up the so uh, there are people who are asking like what are the colors and or space do you use for wall murals uh well <laughs> i'm allowed to brand endorse but uh, i use <laughs> i use asian paints uh, mm -hmm. uh uh which is great uh, uh and i use uh, ultima apex ultima for exterior paints uh i like to mix my own colors so i use this, i i use stainers to mix my own colors as well okay. and uh, yeah I, i draw by brush so i don't use spray can i i, I like contact with the wall so yeah there someone would like to ask if you mentor or take classes for kids my son makes his own sketches don't know how to take it further i teach only at shristi <laughs> and i'm very happy teaching there so, so i guess the kid has to grow a bit has more to grow up <laughs> and and come to shristi and 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 join us there we would be very happy uh, yeah there is mansi who is asking i'm seeing line is an important element of art in your murals any emphasis on it absolutely uh i think uh, a lot of the work that i did and and that's the point that i wanted to come to at the end of it but uh to me the the story of how a image becomes or the story of the process of the image itself is 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 quite a fundamental one at this point of time and i think uh lines sort of uh, are able to tell that story more clearly uh, also i have i have severe ocd so i i don't i hate drips i have i have i have a problem with sharp edges in my images <laughs> i i have to have i mean so basically my relationship with line is more like uh, more like yeah the relationship that a 
kasai has with goats <laughs> are wa what a quite brutal so yeah uh so i just want to end the session by taking through where comics have led me right now i'll take 5 minutes i promise i won't overshoot my time mm-hmm. wo to ho chuka hai so <laughs> but that's fine theek hai so main paanch minute mein wrap up wrap up karta hu yes yes okay so these are the kind of comics i'm making right now uh this was part of a project uh, commissioned by vyom mehta for a public art festival in amdavad which was talking about dark aspects of love uh and silent comics and graphics are stuff that i do alongside making murals uh continuing to show my work in galleries um uh, and in the the contemporary art context um and yeah uh i'll quickly rush through uh this was another one I guess I chose this style also because to Xerox it is very cheap yeah. Uh if I am trying to Xerox or mechanically copy the hatch hatching drawings mm. I lose a lot of information. But with mm. flat bold lines graphic lines I can go for the cheapest method of reproduction. And it's black and, and white so more cheaper. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's a banya buddhi sort of is up but yeah it works out. Uh I actually now covid has in that sense changed a lot of things for a lot of us. and uh, for me not being able to go out and paint murals not being able to continue the story that i have developed in public spaces i started exploring um, the digital platform and that's where comics took me again so i started making this comic called kapal ghantu ki ajab dastan it's a horror comedy story based on based in uh, i come from a humble hill station called masuri it's in north india so it's sort of borrowing elements of mythology and horror from that space um and i made videos out of it short videos that i did just populate on on instagram i'm papi nevla on instagram so if you want to follow yes him, please follow him it's he's the papi nevla uh <laughs> and then i started working on i started getting bolder with the kind of stuff that i could animate um and i made kapal ghantu part 2 which ye naam kahan se aa rahe hain amitabh matlab ye itne awesome naam kapal 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 ghantu is like it is a story about uh, headless creatures and because okay. they are stupid they lose their head so kapal is head and ghantu is idiot <laughs> okay okay oh, got basically uh and uh, yeah so this was another comic that i made and i sort of um i i ended up so this was like again a eureka moment for me when i started drawing and it was a big drawing but i realized the story that i can create is also the process of the image so i i drew it then i overdrew it then i blacked it out and this was it was amazing because this was also a story that i was extremely interested in and uh, i put this up on instagram and a friend of mine uh called kamal who has a band who is an amazing band called hoirong saw it and uh, he wanted to use it for his music video so i ended up making a 6 and a half minute music video uh, which is also following a narrative so i just wanted to show you 30 seconds So we made this short 30 second promo and the video is uh, online. So yeah, that's I should st- <laughs> Thank you so much for bearing with me. I barely kept time. Thank you Payal for being such a uh, Thank you so much. Speaker. There are a lot of people who are asking uh, there are lots of good uh, they are saying what strong lines very inspiring amazing talk so so people are insta handle is papi nevla p a p i n a v e l a n e v l a yes yes papi nevla and yeah. you can see work of amitabh there 
what are your inspiration for mural sir the whole talk he did was all about you know how he was taking inspiration um we are now 5 minutes away from our uh, session which is on the doodle art and santunu hazarika is already backstage Perfect. and i have to go rush but uh, if uh, you have 2 minutes maybe you want to talk about inspiration but i won't be here i'm going backstage to meet santunu see how okay. quick it is you know uh, okay, even on the vir- visual uh, virtual world you have backstages so i'll go and talk to <laughs> santunu and i'll catch you uh, in the next session at 4:45 yeah thank you thank you so much amitabh thank you thank you Done. so my inspirations are uh, well there's this artist called uh, professor batrip who is does this sort of post punk illustrations he does graphics and uh, comics and uh, i am really taken by his work i'm also taken i'm really inspired by by the work of a lot of my contemporaries and my peers i i'm fortunate enough to be teaching so i catch inspiration from my students <laughs> a lot of the times because they do such fresh and original work so uh yeah uh, my peer network i think i'm i'm inspired by anpu varki i'm inspired by harshvardhan kadam i'm inspired by samir kulubur i'm inspired by yantra i'm inspired by a bunch of artists that i have the privilege of working with so yes thank you so much for hearing me i won't uh, uh hold you back and enjoy the rest of the festival and bye bye